I'm Kimberly Osborne with West Virginia State University. Welcome to the Governor's Garden. And joining us is Governor Earl A. Tomlin and First Lady Joanne Jager Tomlin. Thank you very much for having us here Thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. We are in the garden, which is absolutely beautiful. This is a collaborative project between your offices, uh, West Virginia State University Extension, West right. Virginia University Extension, celebrating 100 years of extension, so prime example right. of it. Tell us a little bit about why you wanted WVSU's Junior Gardener Program, which educates school children about agriculture and research, and WVU's Master Gardener, which reaches out to adults about gardening and agriculture. Well, I'll start. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm we'll started being the gardener in the family, but uh, over the years, <laughs> uh, Joanne you know, has joined in and, and you know, we uh, joined canning together. So normally I'm the ones doing the, the outside work, she's the ones doing the canning, but uh, yeah, we've raised a garden at home and then when we came to the mansion, we're uh, pleased to find out there was a few beds here, raised beds. So uh, the last couple of years we've been raising gardens here and uh, you know, everybody kind of gets excited about watching the garden grow, but then as we've uh, become more involved with the National Governors Association, Joe, uh, the spouses have a program. And Joanne, you may want to tell them what all the other first spouses are doing around the country. Well, apparently, especially in Kentucky and Alabama and many of those states, the first ladies uh, started gardens at their residences. Mm -hmm. And as we have visited various states, we saw these beautiful gardens, and also they were adorned with local artwork. And, you know, we knew we had a small garden here, but we thought, you know, this would be really great if, if we could get into a project like that. And then we, we even wanted to take it a little bit further. So that's when we brought in West Virginia University Extension and West Virginia State University because they're educational institutions. They're, they're well-versed in gardening. Mm -hmm. And we thought, wow, what a great project because we could take that and we could go beyond what we even thought about doing here in our own small garden, and that is educating the public, showing the public how easy it is to grow a garden and how easy it is to can, uh, showing young children the importance of raising your garden, mm -hmm. about sustainability, about eating healthy, and more importantly, when you have lots left over, to give it back to your community. So hopefully we're, we're portraying all of that as, as we go through this. Tell me a little bit about what you have growing here, what's been really producing well thus far. We, yeah, we started the spring like most people who garden with lettuce and onions, uh, snow peas, uh, carrots, uh, uh, you know, those cool weather crops that mm -hmm. you plant earlier in the year. Then later we uh, now are having green beans, lots of tomatoes, and uh, you know, we've had uh, zucchini, uh, 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 broccoli, uh, we had corn. Mm -hmm. Of course, you, know, not, you only got a few years of corn <laughs> on the small box. And I didn't see any of that, but anyhow, the corn was what we used. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're continuing now with peppers and, and uh, just recently re-sowed some of the beds with uh, you know, more cool weather crops like the peas and lettuce and radishes and those kind of things. So that really extends the, uh, the gardening uh, uh, cycle if you're able to plant fairly early with cool weather crops and then come back this time of the year and plant the cool weather crops again, which will produce usually up until frost or a little bit later. So, you know, it's been a good variety that we've had here. I was just looking back here, eggplant, cucumbers, right. uh, you know, uh, beets. So it's, it's a good variety. Now, I know you said you've been the one who's done most of the outside work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's my understanding that the student has become a little bit of the teacher <laughs> over here. Yes, she has. Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, I did not grow up with a garden, so mm -hmm. he really taught me everything there is to know about a garden. But my interest is, is great, and I really enjoy cooking. It is mm -hmm. one of my favorite hobbies. And actually, he taught me how uh, to do the canning part of it. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, recipes that his family has used and friends of ours have used. And we started canning, mm -hmm. canning together. And I will tell you that we have been married almost 35 years, uh, and we have never purchased the first jar of spaghetti sauce <laughs> from, a, from a grocery store in those 35 years. Wow. So, you know, I love fresh produce and fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we even use it to eat at the mansion, whatever is fresh that day. We have a salad with all those vegetables here. And when we have guests here, we serve those foods. So kind of like farm to table. Yeah. And how has the, the reaction been to guests? Because I know not only do you have this beautiful garden in the shape of the state of West Virginia here, but you also have uh, in the flower beds, in the pots around the mansion, you've, you've been able to incorporate these edible 
um, mm -hmm. lettuce, yeah. chard. Yeah. I think somebody even pointed out a sweet potato vine growing <laughs> among the flowers. So right. what's the reaction been of guests as they see that it's beautiful as well as edible? I, I think they're surprised, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we got to give the credit, uh, one of the local uh, Girl Scout troops came in and did the uh, flower garden in, in the circle and they incorporated the chard and, and the different kinds of lettuces and it makes a pretty green background especially early in the year and then the flowers mm -hmm. start blooming so it really fills in but at the same time as the vegetables mature you can go out and you know the chefs out cutting down the flower bed but uh, you know it uh, I think it's it's good and, and I think you know the the young ladies uh, really enjoyed uh, being able to participate oh, and absolutely. we've talked about you know there's a lot of flower beds in different places with flowers mm -hmm. around the capital we've got a little bit late this year but you know the possibility of letting various groups who enjoy gardening mm -hmm. come in and, and have their space to you know show off their gardening skills so it's something we may do in the future and, and correct me if i'm wrong here but also you know that's a great example of showing how you can garden even in a small space Absolutely. if you have pots. Um, in addition, I know you also have innovative gardening apparatuses here <laughs> um, with West Virginia State right. University. Right. Right. Um, these towers don't yeah. require soil. Right. Um, it's a water-based solution. Mm -hmm. Have you been surprised at what it produces and does the food taste any different? Tastes good. I, I, <laughs> you I know, hydroponics is something they are doing yeah. a lot of in many, mm -hmm. many places. But, uh, you know, I have never seen anything like this. Yeah. So it's kind of a new experience for me as well. But I think it tastes just as good yeah, as I the mean, other. I really can't tell the difference in it. And, and the thing of it is you can put almost anything from tomatoes to uh, 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 different spices or, or herbs in there sure. that will grow uh, and, and they just uh, you know have the water solution that uh, circulates and you know that would be great for somebody that had a balcony or a very small area would like to you know do it in an apartment and be able to have uh, fresh vegetables right off the, the front porch you know so it uh, yeah, and it's new. It's a new experience for me also to use the hydroponics. Many people think you have to have a huge garden, you know, and part of the gardening experience could be a couple of pots on your patio. If you live in an apartment, you can put a couple of pots out and grow for some tomatoes and green peppers and, and some uh, spices and herbs and those kind of things. And there's nothing better than anything fresh in your, in your food. Tell me a little bit about how you see this going forward and I say that because I was looking at some of the fruit trees that are planted and oh, said yeah. they've got some time and yeah. they say yeah it's going to be a couple mm -hmm. years before they start producing right. what what do you hope going forward this garden becomes for the people of West Virginia we, we hope it you know can become a, uh, a staple here at, at the mansion and, and on the grounds here uh, you know for future residents of, of the governor's mansion where you know they could continue to garden uh, as the uh, fruit trees and uh, I think with uh, the landscape planters you know the, when you get the eastern panhandle of West Virginia you know that's where most of our orchards are so we have fruit trees in the, in the eastern panhandle in, in the garden here but you know yeah, let, the, let them mature let the berries mature and, and you know continue to use it because I think uh, just the interest in it people come up and say oh I stopped by and looked at your garden the other day or you know I, I see your tomatoes are getting ripe and you know so you know people are looking at it we have lots of children school children coming through for mm -hmm. tours here mm -hmm. you know who are able to look at it and a lot of them because of West Virginia State and WVU are are doing school gardens now mm -hmm. so you know, as a gardener, you always like to compare how your tomatoes are doing or your cucumbers mm -hmm. to somebody else, like yours, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> I picked some just well, the other day. You know, I think down the road, too, you know, this year we just started this big yeah, garden. Yeah. But, um, you know, talking with the mansion staff here and looking down the road for the next couple of years, as this grows, we would like to have a couple of times during the summer where we could actually have an open house and people with their children could come through and we might have some local artisans and musicians mm -hmm. here and, mm -hmm. of course, the artwork in the garden. That can, people can come and look and see how easy it is to grow a garden and people could be here to talk to them about it and have a fun afternoon.
Joining us now is John Porter with West Virginia University Extension, who is one of the collaborators on this Governor's Garden project. John, tell us a little bit about WVU's role in developing this edible art arrangement. <laughs> well, um, we, we had a pretty big role in, in helping to design the garden. Uh, our uh, former horticulture specialist who's just retired was actually the designer of the garden uh, and he came up with the idea of putting it in the shape of the state. Uh, so that was uh, Dr. John Jett. And then uh, we, uh, we had a work day here uh, back in May and it was a lot of our agents and we invited the folks from West Virginia State to come and we had an install day uh, and that was to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Extension. We had our uh, 100th anniversary party here uh, celebrating the Smith Lever Act. Uh, and the gov, you know, the governor and our first lady, they provided cake, and we had uh, a great party here and, and planting the garden. It was a lot of work, but it's paid off. Mm -hmm. um, and now uh, we sort of maintain, uh, replant things with our master gardeners in our extension master gardener volunteer program. Tell me a little bit about the master gardener program. I know the junior master gardener program with West Virginia State, but you all focus on the adult population with master gardener, correct? Right. So the master gardener program is uh, an adult volunteer program. Uh, we start off with a class. They go through 30 hours of intensive training mm -hmm. uh, from everything from botany and soils to insects and how to take care of all those things. Uh, and then they are volunteers in the community. So they come out and they work on projects like this. Um, we have a lot of master gardeners that work with the Manamil program uh, and at their garden that we've, we've heard about. Uh, and so uh, we send out people out into the community to do good works that we can't always get out to do ourselves. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, you know, from your perspective and extension, um, what you hope that the governor's garden does to help in terms of educating West Virginians about the ease of, of growing your own vegetables and good, healthy, nutritious options. Well, I think uh, having a garden here at the governor's mansion is a good uh, way to show people uh, that we can garden and we can have good habits of, of eating fresh and local produce. Um, you know, the, the governor actually does come out and work in his garden. Uh, and so if someone with that busy of a schedule can actually work in your garden, then anyone, uh, you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a large garden like this. This is a you know, even though we have raised beds, a large garden, you can have a small container or something um, and still grow lots of, of nice, tasty food. So I think it's just uh, inspiring to help get West Virginians out and gardening more. Brad Cochran with West Virginia State University Extension is joining us now. The garden has raised beds, but we also have this, which is very innovative, um, towers, aeroponic gardening. Tell us a, a little bit about how this works. Well, uh, the, the product you see right here, this is called the tower garden, and it was developed by a company called Future Growing out of uh, Florida. The guy who uh, basically built it out of his own brain, he used to work at the land at Disney, um, okay. He left there, made his own company, and this is the product that came out of it. Um, the product, is, it's called aeroponic growing, and the difference between aeroponic and hydroponic growing is with hydroponic you actually have something that basically the, the, the plants are in, so some sort of growing media. Um, with this, the roots are completely suspended in the air inside of the, uh, the cylinder of the tower. Um, what happens is down on the bottom of the tank is just a, a, a liquid-based nutrient solution. Um, 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, um, circulating pump pumps it to the top. Water comes back down over top of the roots and that's how um, the plants get the nutrients. And we can hear it circulating right now. Right. Yep. Um, can you grow anything in these? You can grow just about anything uh, with the exception of root crops and trees. Um, literally, if it's an above ground 
crop, you can do it. Um, so that eliminates, you know, potatoes, carrots, those kind of things. Um, for the most part, you can grow anything. Now, when I was speaking with the governor and first lady about this, they, this is the first that they had seen this. This was new for them after, you know, 35 years of gardening and right. never uh, buying a jar of, of tomato sauce, they said, <laughs> the entire time they've been married. But this was new to them. Uh, and I asked them, did the food taste any different? And their response was no. Right. Um, from your experience, have you have you tried some of these these peppers, for instance, or tomatoes, or things that have grown from these before? Um, from my experience, you know, it does taste very very similar. Um, certain things I think do taste better. Um, you know, celery that you get, you know, most of the time the celery I get from the store or whatever. You know, like a lot of store bought foods, it has lost a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, being able to harvest directly off the tower, wash it off, and eat it, I actually don't mind eating celery. Um, mm -hmm. which for me is a uh, huge change. Um, you know, so I, I do notice that, you know, tomatoes that you pick fresh off um, are very, very good. Um, you know, so I think you know, compared to what you get in a store or something like that that's been shipped from California or from somewhere out of state, um, you know, I do think there is a, uh, a tremendously better taste on uh, these veggies. With the Junior, uh, junior Master Gardener program, these towers have been taken to schools. Mm -hmm. What are the kids' reaction? The kids just kind of love it. It's almost like a spaceship to them, um, <laughs> as it is to a lot of adults when they see it. Um, we've got a couple of towers in at uh, Mary C. Snow Elementary um, on the west side of Charleston, and they just love it. Um, they've been able to, uh, to grow greens and different things that they've taken in and either had garden parties with their classrooms or put it on the uh, school lunch bar. Um, you, a lot of different things like that, but they just love it. How has it been with the Junior Master Gardeners program when the students then can see what they're doing outside, whether it's in, in this form or the traditional garden form, to then have it on their lunch plates? <laughs> uh, what kind of reaction are, are the students having? Um, every time that I've seen them, their eyes just light up I mean, because it's something that they've seen grow you know, from seeds or from you know, small seedlings. Um, up to maturity and up through harvest. So, you know, so they just take a, a, a great amount of pride into that. Um, you know, every bite they take seems like the smile just gets bigger and bigger. Are we also seeing the students maybe reaching for the more nutritious options because they've done it themselves, oh, they've grown it themselves? Yeah, definitely. And, and we're seeing that not only here in Charleston, but also with some of our stuff in Huntington. Um, the kids are just, just love it. And, and if they have the option of you know, something that might be a little less healthy, um, compared to, you know, oh, we just grew a tomato. Let me go have that. Nine times out of ten, they're going to take the tomato. Okay. Thank you very much. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Thanks for having me. Yep. Joining us now is Gene Simpson, executive director of Mana Meal. Gene, this garden here is an example of what you all have been doing for quite some time, um, not too far from here as far as trying to encourage people to grow food, nutritious, healthy food options with ease. Can you tell us a little bit well, about the garden you have? Yeah, um, I had a volunteer come to me about six years ago and said, I think that you all need to start a garden. And I said, sounds like a lot of work to me. And uh, the more I started thinking about it, I started realizing that the food that we collect from the community basically is all canned food. And when we get fresh produce, it's food that normal uh, customers at the grocery store pass up. If it's bruised or it's dented or it's half rotten and uh, so that's what we would get from the grocery stores which is well and good because we can cut it off and we still got a lot of food so we decided to start this garden and the purpose of starting the garden was to try to make the meals at Mana Meal more nutritious um, so we now serve breakfast and lunch seven days a week 365 days a year our average of people that we're feeding is about 410 a day wow and it's an awful lot of people but we always serve fresh fruit in the morning and we serve fresh fruit and at least two vegetables at noon always at first i saw a lot of it in the garbage can but now i've gotten to the point that i serve so much of it that if they're going to eat that's what they'll get to eat so my whole idea is to try to change um, their eating habits so that they realize how important fresh food is and how good fresh food is so that they can ho hopefully start changing their diets. As your garden um, has been in place and as you've been teaching folks about the importance of these natural fresh options, have you seen some of them come to the garden? Have you seen some of them express interest in 
how to garden as well over the um, years? Not so much how to garden. Um, they don't ask me very much, very many questions, but people say, what's this? What's this? They start asking me what are the different items that I have on the buffet every day. Mm -hmm. um, also, any excess uh, plants that we have when we're planting in the spring, I bring to the manna meal. And then that's when I get, how do I grow? What do you do with this? You know, when does it produce fruit? They start asking questions about that. So I try to give them as m many vegetables as possible that they can take home and plant too. And I guess that's what's happening with the governor and uh, the first lady, is they're trying to explain to people how important it is to grow fresh vegetables. But the point is that anybody can do it anywhere. A lot of it is just knowing what to do, how to do it, and then how to cook it. Because some of the stuff looks absolutely beautiful, but if, you, if you've not had it before, sometimes you do need to go to that well, cook, to the buffet, and say, what is that, and how do I make that at home? That's exactly right, and I do it everywhere I go. That's for sure. Um, I had some seeds this year that came up in my compost, and I had no idea what they were, so they continued to grow, and I got these big, huge squash that I've got no idea. It looked like a, a, a king's cap. And uh, I finally found out they were a squash from zoo, uh, Australia. Hmm. And I cut them and they were wonderful and, and baked them and roasted them. So that was good. We roast a lot of vegetables at Manna Meal and all the little excess pieces that come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are fascinated by that, how easy it is to roast vegetables. Thank you very much. Thank is you there very anything much. else that you wanted to talk a little bit about? Um, come and join us sometime for a great meal. It's the best restaurant in town and it's free. Thank you. Thank you. To learn more about the Governor's Garden Project, visit firstlady.wv.gov. To learn about WVU Extension, visit ext.wvu.edu. And to learn what is land grant, visit wvstateu.edu. This has been a special presentation from the West Virginia Library Commission. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.